Okay, here we're talking about pests, and I see some nice uh, mounding of the soil. This is a uh, gopher mound, and then all of a sudden today, this squash is all wilted. And so when I take a look at it, a gopher completely gnawed off the base of it, and it just happened this morning. So that's a little disappointing. I'm going to have to get in here with a gopher trap, because he was up right in here, chewing right up. Oh, this one's gone too. Yep, it's completely gnawed off. That's unfortunate. So pests are a problem. We have to deal with that. Okay, class, today we have a problem. Uh, we're talking about pests in the uh, garden areas, and I have some. Um, I'm sitting right here on some gopher mounds. The gophers are actually tunneling under the plastic and they've taken out quite a few of these zucchini plants as I showed you in the video. Uh, so now I need to do something about that. And what I have chosen to do is gopher traps. And so there's a disclaimer in this portion of the uh, class. The disclaimer is I'm going to trap a gopher and it's not catch and release. This is trap it and kill it. Okay, there may be some other options out there for you, but when gophers start digging under and taking over your crop, you may feel uh, like I do that it's time to trap. And so I have these mounds here. There's a system of tunnels underneath here. And usually what happens as the gopher pushes the soil up in this big pile, you can follow it down, you can find the tunnel. And I'll dig this up and show you. But the tunnel leads back to a tunnel that goes in two directions. I don't know where the gopher is right now. It may be over there, it may be over here. And so I'm gonna dig down, I'm gonna find the tunnel that divides two ways, and I'm gonna put one trap going this way and one trap going this way in the tunnel. That way, no matter which way the gopher comes from, he's gonna go across the trap. Now you'll notice the trap itself, when you buy these, they're just, uh, this is just a Victor gopher trap. Uh, this one's from Woodstream Corporation in Lilitz, Pennsylvania. You can get these at any local uh, hardware store or you can order them online. How they work is you push this down, it opens up those steel jaws there. There's a little triggering mechanism here that holds this and as the gopher moves through you put this down in the tunnel, as the gopher moves through, it hits this little plate. It pushes the plate, and the gopher gets snapped in between here. Now sometimes you barely catch the gopher, um, or sometimes it kills it right away, and the gopher's still alive a bit. And so what I've chosen to do is wire this. You can tie string or something to it, because I've lost a number of traps where you trap a gopher, it crawls back down the hole with the trap attached to it, and you lose your trap, and it's somewhere in the ground where you can't find it. So what I like to do is attach to a wire, I just attach it to a stick. So once I put this down in the ground, I put the stick with a little flagging tape. If the gopher tries to pull this, it's not going to pull this whole stick down into the ground. Uh, and the flagging tape helps me remember, in case it's a week later and I come here, I'll know where my traps are if I've forgotten. Okay? And so I'm going to dig this up now and show you how I set those traps. Okay, I've dug up and I found where the tunnel goes, all right? And I found that there was a hole coming up right here. I dug back and I found it going two ways. So this way here, you can see I can put my hand all the way in there. Hopefully a gopher doesn't decide to come right now. The tunnel's going down in there. So I'm going to put one trap in there so when the gopher comes back, it'll walk right into it. The other direction is here. You can see my hand uh, going down in there. I've cleaned that up just a little bit so the trap fits easily in there. And so now I'm going to try to set this trap in here gently. Okay, here it is. Here's my hole. Trap's going in with the plate ready. Okay, perfect. If he comes that way, he's a goner. Now my stick, I'm going to put it out of the way here with the uh, wire attached. The other trap needs to be set. I'm gonna try and do this. There we go. Trap set. Use. Okay, there it is. Trying to film and do this at the same time. That was interesting. 
Okay, I'm gonna put this trap down in. Okay, that one's ready there. Now what I like to do is put a small covering over this um, so that when the gopher comes, it's not pushing dirt as it goes. A lot of times when it's uh, been dug into, the first thing the gopher will do is come pushing dirt. If he's pushing too much dirt in front of himself, he'll push dirt into the trap and that'll spring the trap and not get him. So I'm gonna cover this up so that when the gopher comes to get a zucchini snack, um, he just walks right into the trap. I can look at these cucumbers and they look really healthy, the plants look healthy, but I'm starting to see this sticky, oily look to the leaves and the leaves are dotted with a small insect. If I turn them over, yep, they're covered with aphids and so I can see these older leaves are starting to shrivel up. They're just covered with aphids. I could look for ants to warn me about this. I can also look for ladybugs doing their job. They'll eat a lot of aphids, but when it gets to this point, actually there's a ladybug crawling on the edge of that leaf. There it goes, looking for some aphids. Really the ones that eat the most aphids are the larvae of the ladybugs. And at this point I'm about to lose this crop. So I see every single leaf is covered with aphids. So I'm gonna come in with that Pyganic that I mentioned, an organic spray, and um, get, these uh, get these aphids um, rid off of here. I also notice when I just turn this leaf off, I, I see some stalks standing up. So outdoor production, the beneficials are really starting to set in. These are egg cases of lace wings. Uh, I can see them, they're up on stalks, they're very distinct. And so lace wings will come in and eat the, eat the, la the um, aphids as well. Okay, so you can see the ants moving around really fast. The ants are drawn to these little pockets of aphids down in here. The aphids are sucking the sap, the juices away from this uh, rhubarb leaf and uh, they're actually coating the whole stem. So this is a pretty um, bad infestation of aphids. They tend to go on young tender leaves and in this case aphids, I can see the remains of aphids there by the leaking and dripping sap that they left. They actually sucked all the juice out of this leaf completely. That's all that's left is the veination. And so I'm gonna have to do some kind of organic treatment. Here I, I prefer to use a product called Pyganic. Um, short of introducing beneficials, like ladybugs or something, um, Pyganic is a quick acting. See, these are clumps of aphids here on these new leaves. And so this rhubarb is in really bad shape and it's not harvestable because of all this sticky sap residue they drip out. Now the ants are protecting them because they're actually taking the, um, the honeydew from the aphids. And so it's a kind of a, uh, a communal relationship here. The ants protect the, uh, the aphids and the aphids are taking um, material from the plant. A pest that you often get is a earworm and so I see a couple very small juvenile earworms here on this corn and a lot of people in organic gardening will just take the top and break the top out when they harvest I like to give those um, tops to my chickens but if you're selling your corn to somebody else you want to make sure that um, you've used an organic product one of those products is BT Bacillus thuringiensis and that kills just worms and it's a naturally occurring product that is uh, now manufactured and you can use a BT spray to help the any type of ear worms that your corn would have. Okay, so I'm in the little commercial greenhouse again today. I've been showing you this uh, over the course of this growing season and I want to tell you, show you how quickly insects can wreak havoc on a greenhouse like this. So uh, today's lesson is about insects. Okay, so here's my tomato vines. Uh, they were looking really good. You can see the yellow pear tomatoes in there. 
Um, yeah, nice, beautiful. They're har they're ripening up, but now all of a sudden the top of the tomato is gone, and everything is chewed off here. Top of the tomato. How nice! A butterfly uh, in the greenhouse. There's quite a few of them. Here's one. Here's one. Well, this is what they're doing. Here's the um, nice radish plants. I don't really care about the leaves on a radish plant, but it's uh, harming the overall growth. There's uh, caterpillars on the underside of these leaves. I can see the holes eaten in them, and then I can see the droppings underneath. This really nice scale that I've been harvesting off of for uh, taking the older leaves off of them for many, many months, I can see the caterpillar droppings in here. Pretty much renders that not, not edible. Here's the culprit right there. Uh, little green caterpillar. Uh, these are covered with them and I'm going to have to get an organic product called Dipel. It's a bacteria and I'm going to spray on everything inside this greenhouse. This is a different type of kale called uh, dinosaur kale or lancinato kale. Uh, it's got these big savoyed leaves. Um, they're kind of bumpy and like any kale, uh, very tough and grow in heat in the cold. The only deal with this kale is it's looking like some kind of caterpillar is enjoying it. So again, I'll have to use some of that beneficial bacteria to, to knock those caterpillars out. But this crop is doing really well. All right, this area is a little bit unfortunate. A lot of work was put in here, a lot of plants. Here's some nice tomatoes uh, hanging down. These are covered with blister beetles. There's grasshoppers flying everywhere. Here's broccoli plants eaten down to the nubs. Lots of weeds, lots of insects, major issues here. Um, the issue here is so much work was put in and so much valuable crop is actually here. It's just getting overrun. And it's almost at this point harder to reverse this than it is to just wipe everything out, till it in and start fresh. The problem with that is we have a short growing season. You can't just plant tomatoes again uh, in the middle of August and hope for a crop. And so somebody, um, the owner of this uh, small garden would have to decide, is it worth it to cultivate around these again, stake these plants up, um, put down some organic products uh, like such as Nolo bait that could get rid of grasshoppers. Um, you could use some other organic products that we'll talk about in, the, in that area. But the, the physical nature of having to get in here and hand pull these weeds in and around these broccoli plants is like I said um, worse than just tilling this whole thing in and so having a good plan and deciding what you're going to use and how you're going to use it and being aware of those organic products that are available to uh, to take care of this more cultivation more manual labor was definitely needed here but it's a it's a hobby it's enjoyable but it can be a lot of work too so be prepared for that so that your garden doesn't end up like this and maybe this doesn't need to be this big maybe this family doesn't need a hundred plants of tomatoes maybe ten plants of tomatoes would have been more in the realm of uh, what their needs were they could have done really intense cultivation for ten tomato plants and twenty broccoli plants instead of five hundred broccoli plants or however many are here okay just some of my thoughts okay I'm here in the apple orchard and uh, these varieties of apples um, have an insect problem. That problem is not occurring right now. That a problem occurred much earlier in this uh, crop cycle of apples. So you see a lot of apples maturing and there's a lot of really good ones in there. But you'll notice a lot of them have this shot hole look to them. There is a, um, yeah, this has multiple holes in it. So a coddling moth came in when this was just a flower, laid its eggs either on the young fruit or when it was forming flowers. The little larvae bored down into the apple. And uh, if I was to split this open, there would be the larvae in there. Or this could actually be the exit hole where the adults emerged and flew out to do their damage again. And so you see a lot of waste here on the ground. Unfortunately, um, a lot of these apples are no good for the commercial market, but if I carefully cut this up, I can make some good applesauce uh, or even get a few apple slices out of here 
but there will be um, cuddling moth larvae in the interior of this apple. More than 60 or 70 percent of these fruit have those holes in them, um, but some fruit don't. And here's an example of a nice apple ready to go, uh, no holes in it. These squash leaves are showing signs of powdery mildew. It occurs when the air is dry and the spores are spread by the wind and they just love cucumbers. So some bad powdery mildew setting in here. The good news is, is there's some good organic controls to help with this. The bad news is, is most of those organic controls are better used preventative. But I'll probably mix up some Calagreen uh, potassium product and use it here in an organic control for powdery mildew.